Sorry about that. It was just a little temperamental. So you guys should be able to see me in there. So I'm the red, orange, and yellow guy. Um, so you're not a bachelorette party, but normally my joke is, is that I'm the hottest thing inside the video right now. So yeah, it still works. It's a lot of ladies. I think the ladies outnumber the, the guys tonight, so this still works. Um, so what, what are we looking for? Blue and black. That's literally what we're looking for in this guy. We're looking for it to either take shape or to start moving on its own, normally in the shape of a person. So kind of keep that in mind. Thermal imaging, this, this is the real deal, guys. This is a FLIR camera. Like, this is not a phone app. This is not, you know, any kind of fake whatever downloaded. Like, this is the real deal. This is what firemen use to actually help save people. We're going to be doing a few starts and stops with this video simply because as great as the hardware is, the software sucks. So if we record for too long, we lose footage, and I try to get as much footage for you guys as possible. Mm. So now that I kind of did the intro, oh, one last thing. There is a blue dot that's bouncing around the screen. It is there for your benefit as you're watching your video because you're going to get the full video back. Um, it's showing you the coldest spot in the frame at that particular moment. So you're going to know exactly what the temperature is. I normally look for about 15 to 20 degree temperature differences between the ambient temperature, and I already gauge all of that. Plus, we're going to have tools to do that for us. I'm going to stop the video. set on yours because the files are giant so it'll stop about 10 minutes or so and start it in fun so don't freak out all right so welcome to your first space uh this is a parking lot congratulations you made it uh, but do you have any terms that showed up since last we spoke uh it was well over there when a car went by it's a vehicle okay then it says century and then view now it says because <laughs> yeah very big it's all pretty big. I know the vehicle yeah. is, is like real-time stuff, but it didn't identify it as a Toyota or whatever nope. it was. I would be a little bit more excited nope. about that. So this space is, there's nothing here, obviously, right? So this used to be something to the city of Charleston, pretty important actually. This used to be the Charles and Eliza Pinckney Mansion site. So their mansion actually sat in the front of this space facing East Bay Street. Eliza's garden was lined up with Five Church Restaurant over there and came all the way across. And we are standing where the servant and slave quarters were for the home. So, first off, all of you communication advice people, especially you because you have two of them, <laughs> I am not going to be giving you questions like what color is George Washington's white horse. I, we're not going to be doing that here. I am going to withhold information on purpose so that way you guys have a genuine experience. Is that fair? Yes. Yeah, like, yeah that's cool. All right, yeah, he's not going to tell us everything. Cool. <laughs> I will reveal all of the answers at the end before we leave the space, so just kind of keep that in mind. So who the heck were Charles and Eliza Pinckney? They had a son named Charles, they had a nephew named Charles. That's three Charleses. So the father, the son, and the nephew. Now, the son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution. So that's a pretty big deal for us, but I hate politics more than everybody here. And by the way, with those three Charleses, you should now realize why I look for those secondary clues, because we need to know which Chuck we're talking to. Kind of, we never know which one is actually gonna come through. So we're gonna talk about Eliza. She has a much cooler story anyway. So you should see me in, in like Women's History Month. Like I'm a huge hit because we're gonna be talking about females all night long. And like, oh, okay. So Eliza, she married Charles at a young age according to today's standards, not to the colonial times that she came from. So we're talking about a woman from the 1700s. If you're going to ask her how old she was when she got married, you're not gonna hear answers like 12 and 14, today's standards. The reason I bring this up is because her husband, Charles, was over double her age when they married. So it was a creepy age gap back then and definitely a creepy age gap now. So kind of keep that in mind. I always look at my parties and see if like, if I have a married couple that might actually have that age gap. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think I have that big of an age gap in here. Um, but anyway, she married him because her father was over in England where they're from and he thought he was dying. So he's trying to bring all these kids home one last time. And Eliza didn't believe he was dying. So instead she stays here and she gets married. It's 1744, you don't get married in 1744 for a green card. We don't, we're not even a country yet. So she did marry him out of love. So there's no like affairs or any kind of foul plays. So don't even ask, don't poke for that. But she was right, dad did not die right away. Instead, he starts sending her gifts from England to this space. One of those gifts happened to be the plant seeds of indigo. If you've been in town or you live in town, you've seen the word indigo somewhere, I can probably guarantee it. Indigo is a plant that makes blue dye that makes our blue jeans blue. A lot of you actually have it on tonight, which is nice. Most of you actually have it. Um, and sometimes there's nights I don't have any examples. Um, but at any rate, when she got the seeds, she didn't know what to do with them. She had to learn from her slaves how to keep them cultivated. It's not hot here all the time, as you can feel. So when she figured it out and experimented with the seeds here, she moved into a cash crop plantation just south of here by the Stono River. Gets a hold of her father and says, our rice plantations are going downhill. We need to you know, really make a profit from this indigo. And we now have an international businesswoman during colonial times. So this is absolutely unheard of, by the way. So. That's her business, that's the boring stuff. Let's get into the weird shit, because that's why you guys are all here, right? 
we want to hear all the crazy questions. Now, with all of the communication devices that are actually out here, I'm going to kind of go through a series of questions with each person so you have something to focus on. But at the same time, if something else you know fits your fancy that you want to know about, cherry pick that question and by all means use it. Um, so with yours, yours is going to give us a lot of different things. I'm going to give you the marriage questions, obviously, so you can ask her how old she was because it will give us numbers. Um, but I also want you to ask, well, here's what I'm going to tell you. The Eliza we just talked about is the second wife named Eliza from Charles. So now we have three Charleses we're dealing with and two Elizas. The first wife died in January of 1744. He marries the one we just talked about five months later, May of 1744. So death, five months later, remarriage. Both Elizas have a maiden name that starts with the letter L. Figure out which Eliza we're dealing with. Both names have come up on your specific spirit box. You can also cherry pick of any other question I'm about to hand out over here. All right, so Terry, you have two of them. So with yours, the the, speed, the Ouija board one, we don't really have a set of questions for that yet. We're still experimenting with it to kind of see if we can get spelled out terms out of it. But your other one, the mansion's not here anymore. I want you to ask what happened to the mansion and get a date. Like, when did that happen? It's a very specific date. You guys see, we're not, we're not working with yes, no answers at this point. With yours, Eliza's death how old she was, where she died, what she died from, and what president was a pallbearer at her funeral. So again, you get the fun stuff. And she's usually pretty open about all of those questions. With yours, the children. I already told you there's a one. His name was Charles, right? We'll call him Chuck. Um, now, there are more. You can ask how many and what their names are, but that's it. The reason why is because there's a tragedy among those children. If we poke the bear against a prominent, very proud English woman, all activity will stop. Have you gotten any numbers yet, by the way? Right around 0.5. Yeah, so a bunch of nothings. So again, we're going to know it's you if you poke the bear and, and we get nothing throughout the site. So just don't poke the bear and that goes pretty much everybody. Now we are going to spread out in this space. I only see about five cars in here, which is really cool. So we're not going to go in between vehicles. We're not going to go near vehicles. We still have plenty of space. It's still a weekday. Um, but I am going to be keeping Anne behind so I can show her how to use that motion sensor a little bit further. And then I'm going to be doing kind of a round robin with everybody. I'll do two round robins, kind of see what's going on. And then I'll pull us back here again to kind of go over the answers and any activity that actually occurred. So, do you have anything that's been showing up on your Ouija board there? Well, it's just kind of... Just Now you got something. Something just came from there. We're going to turn up the sensitivity in that guy, so you might get some letters out of this guy that might not make any sense. The first week we started using that guy, we did get an uh, anagram spelling of Eliza with an extra U. So it was E-U-L-Z-I-A, consecutive. So we had Yulzia. So we had all of the letters to spell Eliza with an added U. Those are the types of things that we're looking for with that specific thing. It's not going to be absolutely perfect because electricity fluctuates. So she's going to see that. If, she's, if you start getting like A, B, C, D, like consecutively, it's way too high. And I'll show you how to turn down the sensitivity when I do the round robin. Um, any other terms that showed up? Just an L. Oh. So you know, when you want to see the list, just hit that little white box next to the word. And you'll be able to scroll through everything. And then you just circle back. Okay. All right, everybody, let's spread out, get some spirit boxes cranked up, let's do this, and uh, I'll be bouncing around here in just a minute after I show Anne how to find some ghost with motion. Do I turn this one on? Yeah, I'll mute that one for sure. That's the uh, right button, the right-hand side. There's only one button there. You just click it once and release it. And again, you might not hear anything right away. You might just get some blurbs here. That's whatever you're on. The recording records you can see that. So even if you, what colors do you have? These all the way I do want you to hear those radio stations. So, yeah, in the event that, let's say a radio commercial comes to us, buy a Kia today. I want to know that you're going to buy a Kia today. So, the word buy might actually mean something to that information. Does that make sense? All right. Now that you've seen a little bit of the numbers, let's kind of talk about the motion sensors. So, we're going to flip here and turn off your operator ball. Perfect. Flip the device around so you can actually see the back of it. There's a little flat. Now, lift it up this way. It doesn't stay up, so you can actually. Um, there's two little white buttons. You want the one closer to the edge on the right. So you click it into the device. Have you guys done it? Yeah, you gotta press it hard and get it to click it. 
Alright, as with yours, I'm not always following up with cameras because that's usually not a real-time moment. It's usually the review the next day. Yeah. So the slower you are, and it's, it also records audio. So I usually look for my quiet people. Yeah. And it's usually <laughs> the one that comes through. So this gets kind of jerky. Yep. So whenever you have like this kind of thing that's already like moved over two or three letters, there's a way to reset it. This little dial right here, you click it counterclockwise okay. to shut it off and then back to 9 o'clock. And then you have a clean slate. Okay. So I would do that with every time it gets full. Good. If there's nothing in there and you can't make anything out, um, if you want to call me to take a look at it, I will. But you seem like a pretty intelligent lady to figure out a scrambled word. Um, if you don't see anything, just reset it and start over. Okay. Where are I heard help? They have. Another horse carriage come by? Oh, no, they're taking a horse carriage. Yeah. Help isn't usually a term that I hear over here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start bouncing around with everybody else. Let's see what we got going on. All right, you see Leandra, have you heard anything? Are you going to get the jet in
whole group what we found. Uh, we're going to start off with Terry. What else did you hear? Do you got anything else on there? Nothing else? Nothing on your on your Ouija board either? All right, for those of you with cameras, if you want to give your hands a break and stop those, by all means, you can do that. Um, so what else did we hear on our spirit box? If people walk by, you're going to see like some more. It was just painting another way. Um, but with that said, when we crossed the last crosswalk coming down East Bay Street, that's where the original Charlestown walls used to be. So Charlestown used to call Charlestown, and it was a walled city. Which means you're standing on one of the first streets we ever had. So, people used to live down here. I have the full list of residents of every single person that's ever lived here. So if somebody kind of grew up here, just to see if maybe go get to the um, up there. So, the things that you guys normally tell me about every six to seven weeks are the same two names over and over and over again. Benjamin and John. We did get a John earlier, but I'm going to relate that to the space of where we were next to Big John's. Interesting thing about John is there were four different Johns that lived down here over a 60 year time span. That specific John likes to give us his last name. Johnson. Somebody heard Jefferson earlier. Did that mm -hmm. So, again, he wasn't, I don't know if there's a Jefferson related to the Pinkney Mansion site, but John Johnson is kind of a creepy name, right? So, Tom is pretty evil to name him John Johnson, um, but that's what we'll get every six to seven weeks. Johnson and Benjamin. They both lived here in 1801. When I say people live down here, I'm talking like two to five people at a time. I'm not talking like this big roster of a census list. It's like a page and a half long. It's not a very lengthy list. So I don't find it very calm, like coincidental that Benjamin and John keep showing up every six to seven weeks. So we didn't get anything this night because we're in week three of that loop. So that's why I wasn't necessarily expecting it, but we never know. The other thing about this alley is I can tell you why that's happening. Man, is that loud all the way down there. Um, we're standing on Belgian blocks. These bricks have been here since 1739 that we know of. So, the historians can't even get it right. They, they still don't know the exact number. But, they're made out of granite. We're dealing with the stone tape theory here. If you guys have watched the paranormal TV shows, they may have touched on this, but a quick explanation is that a natural stone like granite, which is what Belgian blocks are made out of, can hang on to the memories of the things that occurred here which is why we're getting the same names over and over and over again. So, again, granite is also not supposed to have an electrical charge to it. So I'm going to have you set your device on any brick you want, and let me know if you get anything above that 1.1. Nope, you don't need the run meter. We're just going to go with the red numbers on there. So literally set it on the ground. And we're going to see if we get anything out of it. At times, I've seen it go all the way up to 15. We'll take a 75. That's pretty decent. Pick another brick just in case. Did it go away right away? So make sure it didn't come from a draw this, this one doesn't, it acts it's weird down here. So I like the accuracy of this one. Mm -hmm. So the 7.5 may have been from a jostle when you set it down. Um, so I'm not going to write that one down. But let me know if that thing goes above like 1.1. Again, at times we'll see that 15, but it's closer to that 6 to 7 week loop. Um, again, I, I like bringing you guys down here because you guys, most of you aren't from here. You like to see some cobblestone. The other interesting thing about this space is the name of it, Lodge Alley. It's named that because the Freemasons had a Masonic lodge down here. So, we will get terms relative to the Freemasons. The interesting thing about that is normally, as we're turning the corner, the two red spirit boxes, we've had the term Illuminati show up before you guys even know that the Freemasons have been down here. So, the funny thing about that is... I heard shuffle. It's a leaf. A leaf, though. Okay. Like, I heard a shuffle. <laughs> Mitch is filming. He's quiet, but he's filming. He's got this. It's okay. You can still point it that way. I never know what you can actually get. Um, now, the term Illuminati. There's something else coming up? There's something moving off the wall. Okay. Yep. About where those bushes are. Somebody tried to capture something there the other day, and I was able to take the bunk up the next day. Go ahead and keep filming that spot. I'll definitely take a look at it. Um, I'm going to take a look at Andy's film that he's recording. Take a look at that too. I see a very, very small spot, very, very small. It was right up in this area, up in here, coming the off, off the wall. Okay. I was trying to. Yeah. So that's the sky. Yeah, that's the sky up there. Yeah, that's All so right. weird. When you were talking about the, like the and the things, literally it came through and don't fall on you, brother. I was like, what in the world just happened? You keep getting all these full phrases. Andrew, are you getting anything out of yours? I don't know, maybe I turned, do I have it turned up too high? Or? Nope. How much? 
I just said, don't follow me, brother. So weird. I was like, so, that's awkward. The weird thing, of, again, about going back to the Illuminati piece is who the hell's talking about the Illuminati on the radio? Like, that's the first question. And second, why are we only hearing it here? I verified all six times from last year and the three times from this year because it was always on the recordable device. So whichever one of you has a recorded one, again, I focus on that when we're walking into the area. Um, the next space we're going to go to, uh, okay, you picked up your place. Um, we're going to go to another alley. However, I can't take you all the way through. You guys have the noisemakers and, and the, you know, the blinky lights and that kind of thing. It is considered residential and out of bounds for tours at the end of it. Not to mention, I've been kind of booted out of it and make a decision to kind of stick to one half of the alley. So you guys are probably, we're getting more into these more consistent ghost tour stops, but we're going to be talking a lot differently because we're ghost hunting. You guys need different details. And I also will tell you how I got booted out of that alley, because that's the fun part of the story. So, um, as we exit the alley, we're going to stop the recordings because we're going to be cutting through a neighborhood at the video cameras. So, we don't record houses the same way we don't record, you know, cars. You got to that. Spirit boxes continue listening in. Um, as we exit, you're going to turn yours on mute as well. So, just because it's a noise maker, you're the only one with actually open air. Everybody else has an earbud. Um, let me know if you get any crazy spikes in, so we're going to see, obviously when we get the street we'll probably have some, but on our way out. Alright, any other terms that showed up before we leave the space? Oh, export. 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 Ship and export. That's an interesting piece. Somebody heard ship as we were exiting, right? So, the people that lived here, a lot of them were working on ships. So they were either uh, ship carpenters, coopers, the barrel makers, that kind of thing. Like, they worked on the wharfs that were right here along the edge. Right. So again, we will get terms wrapped around that. Um, the word cooper has shown up in this location in the past. So, and not to mention, that's the Cooper River. So take that for what it's worth. All right, All right. let's go to another crazy alley. Let's go see what we can capture right. out there. Keep in mind, these people that are going to be passing by did not pay to get filmed. Again, this is kind of a staple for every ghost tour in Charleston. Have you two been down here before with another ghost tour? Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Well, welcome to the Okay. This is Philadelphia Alley now. We named it that because after one of the cities that helped us out of one of our many, many fires that we've had that I would mentioned earlier, they actually gave us quite a bit of money. So we donated basically this alley to a tribute to them. And also dueling became illegal and stupid. So. Where this is used to be called Duelers Alley. This is where some of the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. Every ghost tour tells this story. Again, different details here because of the, what you guys are listening at. So, here's how this goes. A doctor moves down here from Rhode Island, which by the way, you're going to be looking for the initials RI on your list, Harry. So, um, RI is very specific to Rhode Island and something else that's going to come up here in just a minute. So, again, if it shows up consecutively, I'll be pretty stoked. Now. His name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. He moves down here because he's supposed to get married to his fiance, Amanda. Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. She has a, an attorney that's helping her out with this money. The attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's money. So he tells Amanda, get rid of the doctor. So Dr. Ladd moves to Charleston to prove that he's not after her cash. And the coachman that brought him into town set him up to be robbed and killed. Wasn't a good start to his stay here. But somebody was walking by. His name was Ralph Isaacs. Initials, R.I. Before we even had the Ouija board, R.I. was showing up a lot. Didn't you have R.A. or something show up on yours earlier? Yeah, yeah. I did actually. Yeah. yeah, so I was very interested because it was weird that you heard just letters through radio stations. But it did show up R.I. before that. So that's part of the reason why I bought the Ouija board was for this location. <laughs> um, just so that we could have it. But anyway, Ralph, is, he knows the, the coachman that's setting up the doctor. And he goes up to the doctor and he says, I know this guy is going to try to kill you. He's like, don't go in there. I got some friends at 59 Church Street. You can stay there and you can rent a room from these two ladies that I know and you'll be safe. Dr. Ladd takes him up on the offer and the two of them become friends. Now, the longer the doctor is staying here in Charleston, the more money he's making. He's proving his point that he wasn't after Amanda's money. So, Amanda's moving down soon and they're gonna get married. Dr. Ladd becomes known as the Whistling Doctor. Every haunted city you're ever going to visit in the future is gonna have a whistling ghost. It's, it's a cliche, we all have one, but there is proof of this one. We're gonna get to that. Dr. Ladd and Ralph go see plays together. 
can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. That's the hierarchy of Charleston. Dr. Ladd gets better seats. So they talk about these plays on the way home. One night they went to go see Richard III, which basically, if you really look at it, is a R-I-I-I, which I never thought about that until just now. That's kind of cool. So we'll see if we get that coming up. But they're arguing over the new actress that was in the play. Dr. Ladd thought she was fantastic. Ralph, not so much. During the argument, Ralph starts insulting the doctor's fiance back home in Rhode Island. They obviously get pretty ugly with each other and go their separate ways. I told you Ralph knows a lot of people in town, so he goes to his friends at the newspaper and puts an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of Dr. Ladd. Kind of a disgrace to society kind of mentality. Dr. Ladd sees the newspaper ad and he rebuttals with, let's go to Dueler's Alley. We're going to settle this once and for all. Somebody's going to die. So they come down, they took their ten paces, they turn, the doctor pointed his gun in the air, and he shot. He didn't want to kill his friend. He just wanted to have the courage and bravery to show up to the fight, which is often what happened at a duel. But Ralph, he puts his one bullet inside the kneecap of the doctor. And Dr. Ladd didn't die either, but Ralph proved that he's still pissed off. And Dr. Ladd drops to the ground. His friends picked him up, carried him home to 59 Church Street, where he dies. Some stories say 10 days later, other stories say 4 days later. So, if I'm correct, I want to say if it's the 4 days later, we would probably be 2 to 3 days away from the dueling date. So, kind of keep that in mind. That date is going to be at the top of your analysis form tomorrow. Um, but... Dr. Ladd goes home and he dies 10 days later after refusing medical treatment. He's a doctor. He probably tried to bleed out this bullet himself. Other stories and other tales that I've heard say that the second best doctor came into town and tried to help him. So, they say as you walk through the alley, the campy, you know, cheesy part of this whole story is that you can hear the whistles from the doctor as you walk through. We're using a voice recorder right now, which is another reason why we use earbuds with the spirit boxes so there's no interference. If you're going to walk through this alley all the way through without a tour guide, of any kind and turn on your voice recorders from your phones to see if you get whistles in the background and listen to it later. What I do want you to keep in mind is that every damn local knows this story except for Andy and Leandro over here. So <laughs> anybody walking up and down Cumberland Street or Queen Street throws a whistle down the alley. I do it every single night. We end over there, my car's over there. I have to pass the alley. If my 16 year old daughter's on the tour, she we actually race to see who's going to throw the whistle first. So it's kind of a little game we play, especially since I got blue that. And I'm really surprised that there's only one other very small tour here. But I don't even know what time it is because I don't keep track of that when I'm out here with you guys. Whatever happens, happens. Let's talk about how I got booted out because that's the fun part, mm -hmm. right? This alley didn't always come all the way through. I love looking at how something evolved. It's kind of stopped like about halfway between us and the street, which is part of the reason why I stopped here. This is where the livestock was kept for the city of Charleston. It was called Cow Alley. We have gotten terms wrapped around livestock and the name and the word cow. Just kind of keep that in mind. But anyway. Those bricks down there are older than those bricks because they didn't exist yet. Those bricks down on that side are sun-dried bricks from slave children. I'm sure you guys realize I love to study history and I would love to show them off to you, but I do it to every group and kind of let them know that they're down there. There is a handprint in one of those bricks down there from a slave child. Fingerprint swipes on the left-hand side if you're walking down this way. When I used to take my tours all the way down there, not really knowing my bounds yet, yes, I was still new at this at one point, um, my entire group decided to huddle around that one brick with the handprint in it on November 26th of 2020. Yes, very specific date. I'm trying to scurry them along because it's outside the dining room window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. The gentleman had had enough of me stopping there every single night. And by the way, that kid's not staring at that brick in the afterlife. That's his last place. I treat that thing the same way I do a grave or a headstone. Again, he's not there. So, he'd come out screaming, 16 year old daughter thought it was great, she was probably 13 or 14 at the time, because dad's getting yelled at, and we moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. Some of you know I worked in retail management for over 20 years. I am never working another Thanksgiving in my life. Many of those years were for Walmart, put that one in the back of your brain. Now, I just ended up laughing like poor soul, but um, the next day was November 28th of 2020. I get a phone call asking me to go down halfway, which is what we're allowed to do, that's the boundary, or to reroute my group. I decided it's not fair for my group of 10 to 11 people to work around 20 to 60 that are normally down here, especially during peak season. So I decided I'm gonna tell the story over there and we're gonna reroute. So I told my entire group that night, I don't really believe in this story because I don't have any evidence of it, but we're, I'm a vampire guy, not pirates. So we're gonna discuss a little bit about pirates and see what happens. Before we left, somebody hears the name Anne on a spirit box. So I went, okay. Maybe there's something going to go on because I did not tell them we were going to be investigating the female pirate Anne Bonnie. So I was like, okay, let's see what happens. I go down there and I tell them a little bit about piracy of what I did know. I had to do some quick research because I didn't normally go to that spot. Somebody else hears the number 300 come out of a spirit box. I don't know what that means. That's why I asked you how many dollars you heard earlier. 300 is relevant because we were there on November 28th of 2020 
and Bonnie's trial for piracy was November 28th of 1720. We were there on the exact 300 year anniversary of her trial. Yeah, first time I ever took a tour there that I was not excited about taking somebody there because again, I'm into vampires, not pirates. But since then, I've read more damn books on piracy than I ever thought I ever wanted to. Mm -hmm. Trying to piece together a factual historical investigation based on pirate lore is very difficult. What I'm going to tell you is that yes, I have a master's degree in writing, some of you already know that too. It, everything we're going to be talking about with this pirate deal on the next location is coming out of more than one resource. I was trying to verify everything so we had something factual to work with. It's going to be also open-ended questions for you guys. I'm not going to give you much. So, do we have anything crazy going on with this, your devices that are hearing? Yeah, I just said Monday morning, 9 a.m. Wait, did you hear it when I said that? Like, specifically, I heard Monday morning, 9 a.m. When you were talking about duel, it said aim. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. Now it says king. It says king? King. Nice. K-I-N-G, yes. king. That's a good one next to the... Yeah, that's bleed over from the next spot. That's a good one. That's one we don't get often. That's why I'm stoked. Um, so you said Monday morning, 9 a.m. So now I gotta look at the date and see what day that fell on, because that might be the exact schedule time of their duel. So based on whichever story oh. might be there. Do you kind of mm. see where I'm going with that? Yeah. One? Okay. Um, so again, it's one of those pieces. What's coming up in our Ouija? We got anything going on? Anything? Well, you were muted over there. So Andrew, you got anything going on? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna actually exit this alley. We're gonna stay to the right as this other group is passing by, and we're gonna head up and go talk about some crazy ass pirates. Let's go see if we can capture this one. R. It's rated R. spot for all the ghost tours. This whole corner is usually flooded. Um, so, did you guys notice that there was a ghost tour and a very bright light over there? I don't know what's going on with that light, but um, everybody likes to stop. Most ghost tours will go to that church over there because it's their big finale. And I kind of let them have it because it's a show and tell for them. They don't get many, so you guys obviously have much weird tech in your, in your ears. <laughs> so, um, again, I let them have it, but I still tell you the very brief story of it. If you guys have taken a ghost tour, this is probably a big thing. Um, so, there's two different sides to the cemetery. So, the eastern side, if you could be buried over there if you belong to the church and you're a native Charlestonian. So if you were born here, you could be buried over there. So Eliza's husband, Charles Pinckney, and the nephew, Charles Pinckney, are both buried across the street because they're from here. The seventh place president, John Calhoun, is buried behind me because he's not from here. They actually shuffled his ass back and forth trying to figure out where the hell he's supposed to go. It turns out he just lived here a long time. He's not actually from here. I want to say he's from Columbia, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know that one exactly. But they're all over there because there's a sign right inside the gate. It says, there's no ghost here but the Holy Ghost. Yeah, there's a reason for that sign. 1888, a young lady dies by the name of Sue Howard Hardy. Can anybody tell me what her initials spell out? Exactly. It's cheesy, it's corny, and it shows up all the damn time for us. So, it's the only reason I bring it up. Now, Sue Howard Hardy dies six days after her stillborn child. Don't know the exact reason. Could have been heartbreak. Could have been any other complication. I don't know. But, 1987, 99 years later, a photographer is in town, he's local, and he's taking pictures of all of our cemeteries, and he finds a full apparition in one of his photographs um, while he's developing them himself. It's 1987. He doesn't have the tech that we have now to be able to analyze it through his phone. So he sends it to Kodak. I think everybody here knows what Kodak is, right? Good. Um, so teenagers think it's a bear. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, yeah, you can all chuckle. That's a funny one. It's, or it's really sad, depending on how you look yeah. at it. So at any rate, Kodak can 
only authenticate the picture that it came from the, t the camera that he said it came from and that it is a legitimate photograph that has not been tampered with. Now, what they won't tell you on other ghost tours is that the damn photograph is cursed. Females that handle it in a digital format, even a regular format, obviously you're not going to have the original, but tablet, phone, said to have the same symptoms we talked about at the beginning. So, headache, nausea, busyness. Pregnant females that handle it in digital format said to not have a good pregnancy based on the gist of the story. I'm not going to have some young honeymooners come on the tour and touch my tablet and nine months later I curse their family. I am going to show you the picture, but I'm going to ask you all to keep your hands off my damn tablet. Because again, even if I have to send you something to verify a piece of evidence from this, it'll tell you if the photo is in there or not. It'll say warning cursed photo in link, or I'll put not in all caps, so that way you guys can check out whatever evidence we need to check out. It might be the date that she died or so forth and so on that I found. So, let me bring up the picture. I will kind of go two by two, because that's the way you guys came to me, um, and show you the picture, and kind of let you uh, make the determination for yourselves. Now this guy, for guys like me, is normally like in the top 50 of apparition, apparitions caught. So again, that's usually how it goes. So this is a full picture. Your apparition is right here. You're looking at a woman praying over her own grave with a baby basket next to her. Keep in mind that there is no record of the baby's birth or death, which means that the baby is probably buried with mom. Full picture. Apparition is here. Shoulders. Baby basket next to her. Yeah, this is usually in one of those grand lists. That's why all the other tour guides like showing this guy off. So your apparition, shoulders, top of head, baby basket next to her, and this is Sue's grave. So yeah, very creepy thought. Have you guys seen this before? Like zoomed well, in? Well, I'm sketched out because I have a copy of it on my phone. Yeah, you need to get rid of it. Yeah, so, it's so creepy. Yeah, you've seen it before. Um, but yeah, get rid of it. Get rid of it. All right, so now we're into pirates. Anything crazy going on with your devices before I get started with this crazy story? Yes, the backpack came off because this one gets a little animated. I just said, lead and harvest. Lead is so good. Lead is a quote. Wow. Um, anybody hear the word belly? Stomach? Anything? What do you get? Labor. Like labor too. Keep that one, I gotta write that one down. That's a good one. But plead is direct. Wow, I don't have to write yours down because it's doing it for me. All right, let's get into it. We're gonna be discussing that little tiny building over there with the crosses on it. Those are not crosses, those are earthquake bolts. If you're not from here and you're unfamiliar with earthquake bolts, they're basically turnbuckles. In the event we have another earthquake, like what we did in 1886 that we talked about at the beginning of the tour, and we haven't, by the way, you can turn those turnbuckles and it's supposed to straighten the building back up and keep it from any further damage. It's a great idea, but that shit doesn't work. So, the reason I bring this up is because those earthquake bolts are the first ones that Charleston put in because this is the oldest government building in South Carolina. It was finished in 1713, which is exactly why we're here. We've talked about intelligent ghosts, residual ghosts, and another intelligent ghost in Philadelphia Alley. This is what I call a familiar. What I mean by that is because we don't have any buildings this old where Anne Bonnie would actually recognize it. So and this, this is usually a hit or miss location. We're either gonna have a lot going on or nothing, but we're getting some good stuff already. So, Anne moves here at the same time that this is being constructed. By the way, this building took 10 years to build. Does that sound like our government, small building, 10 years? No, not at all. So I'll answer for you. Um, but follow me, there's a lot of twists on this one. 1708, young lady moves here from Ireland. Her name is Anne Cormack. She's with her father and his mistress. The mistress turns out to be Anne's mother. Is everybody with me so far? I slow down on this part because it can be very confusing. The three of them are running away from her father's angry wife. How pissed was she that you have to leave your country to come here from Ireland? Yeah, just putting that out there. But anyway, they land in Georgetown. It's just north of here between us and Myrtle Beach. Dad bought a plantation and mom died pretty quickly. So that means he has to send young Anne down here to sell anything from the plantation to keep things afloat. That's why we're here. Building is familiar. Anne back home, by the way, in Ireland, was kind of a badass. They say she killed one of her servants with a knife to the belly when she was only seven, eight, or nine years old, depending on which story of the version that you're reading. So, just want to put that mentality of this young lady in the back of your brain. Fast forward. The building's done in 1713. Pirates are coming through town in 1715. Anne is stoked. She's going to fall in love. Why? Because she's trying to earn her freedom, just like a man. It's a man's world at this point in time. So, first guy she falls in love with. Yes, I said first. There's a handful. We're going to go through them. First guy is James Bonney. You can already see where this one's going, right? Dad didn't approve, filthy pirate. They go to Jamaica, they get married. She's now Anne Bonney, the famous female pirate. However, 
this guy, James Bonney, is not the Captain Jack Sparrow that she was hoping for. Because every young lady wanted a Captain Jack Sparrow, right? Hmm. This guy is a privateer, which means he's a spy for the British. So he's a coward. That's what she thinks. So a few years later, she falls in love again. This is John Rackham, a.k.a. Calico Jack. This is literally the person they based your Captain Jack Sparrow character off of for your, for your Disney films. Hmm. So this is literally the guy she wanted. It's because it's the guy. Jack has his own ship and wants to be part of it. You can't put a female on a pirate ship. Does anybody know why? Bad luck. Bad luck. Exactly. So, most people get a little dirtier with that, so thank you for keeping it family friendly. Now, <laughs> Anne wants to be part of that ship, and he makes a deal with her. If you dress like a guy, you can actually be part of the crew. And you're going to be a female in my quarters. She's okay with this because Dad used to cross-dress her as a boy back home in Ireland to keep her away from his wife kind of hiding her as an apprentice. So that's why she's okay with this. But it's a man's world and she's good. But we're all adults here. Let's put two and two together. Being a female in his quarters, she's eventually going to get pregnant. <coughs> and you cannot have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. Somebody's going to figure out that she's a female. So he drops her off in Cuba. These are friends of mine. Have the baby here, labor, and come back later and we'll figure it out. So she goes and has the baby, returns with no child. We have no idea what happens to this child. But she's dressed like a female. This makes Jack pretty angry, because now everybody's going to know that he let a girl on the crew. And while she was away giving birth to his baby, he captured another pirate crew. They're down below deck. Anne's going to go flirting with that pirate crew, because that's what Anne does. She's trying to make Jack even more mad. Guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be a female, just like a guy to be part of the pirate crew that Calico Jack just captured. So now we have two ladies on the same ship trying to be pirates. This young lady's name is Mary Reed. She went by Mark Reed to become a pirate. Her and Mary become friends, possibly lovers, but you're never really going to know for sure. But the British find out where they are, and they send a fleet of ships to come take it down. Now, Anne and Mary are the only two pirates that are not drunk enough to come up and fight with their one bullet flint locks, probably because they don't know how to use the damn cannon jet. They haven't been pirates for very long. Obviously, two ladies are not going to take down a fleet of ships. So as they're being arrested by the British, she looks at her captain, her beau, Calico Jack. She says, you should have fought like a man instead of being hanged like a dog. The word dog shows up here a lot. The judge, his name is Nick as well, so if you guys hear my name, it's usually relative to him. He wants to see the two men that fought back so valiantly after he's tried and hung Calico Jack and the drunken pirates that wouldn't fight, so they're dead and gone two days prior. Anne and Mary go in front of the judge, they reveal their gender. He doesn't give a shit that they're female. He still doesn't <coughs> hang them because they're no pirates. We plead our bellies was the last thing they screamed out because you cannot hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. So he sends them both back to jail and delays the hanging. Dad is still here in South Carolina with all of his Irish money because he was an attorney back home. And he bails out Anne. She remarries. That's husband number two, but guy number four because we're going to count Mary Reed. We don't really know. She has four kids and dies at the age of 84. Yes, very abrupt ending. I know. But we don't know much about her after her pirate career because it was glorified for basically like two or three years. Now, Mary Reed. She actually died a year later in that Jamaican jail from whatever pirates die from in a Jamaican jail. Use your imagination. Most books and articles will tell you that it was fever or anything very simple. I'm going to call bullshit. It was probably scurvious and nasty and gross and everything else you guys can think of. It's a pirate in a Jamaican jail, so take that for what it's worth. Now, I left out a couple of things that you guys can use for your spirit box activity. The two things I left out are the names of Anne Bonnie's parents. That's the father and the mistress. So again, I'm not going to give you a whole slew of questions like what we did before. This is an open forum. You guys ask whatever you want to. The other thing I left out, which we already have the answer to, is the name of Calico Jack's ship. It was called the Kingston. The word king just would suffice in this location, which you already have on your word list on our way here. So I'm excited about that. I would like to have something a little bit further with your specific device. It's not about the numbers because you're not going to get any. It's about the colors. Ask Aunt Bonnie what her hair color is. She'll show you by touching the antenna and making it go to red. It's the only time I've ever seen that game go to red on command is in this location. So have some fun with that. For those of you that want to explore a little bit more, this is our last stop. So if you want to get some footage of the front of the powder magazine, you have to exit the lot and make a left in front of the bushes. Don't interrupt the other tours. If you wanted to go over to the other cemetery, I don't know that the, the crazy bright lights over there were from the church, but it's probably not going to do us any good um, having our cameras over there tonight. But again, don't interrupt the other tours. It's the only thing I ask. We're going to know within the first five minutes or so, based on what you guys are hearing, what you're seeing, and what's going on with your devices, if this is a if this is a good night. Um, again, this is a hit or miss location. I'm going to keep you for one more minute before I spread you guys out. Are you guys hearing anything, by the way? Uh, you're on I B. got A, B on my... A, B? Uh-huh. And then there was a, a Aunt shoot Bonnie. for Aunt Bonnie. Uh -huh. Oh, shit. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then would did she have a first name? I got R, A, B. I didn't know if that was connected to it or just the A, B. 
I don't know who they Okay. So it would, the AB would be Ambon. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you had RAC, John Rackham, Calico Jack's real name, is spelled Rackham. So it's okay. R-A-C-K-H-A-M. But you have an AB directly. Like, I'm uh -huh. going to take that. Like, yeah. that's, that's pretty solid, especially with the word cleave coming through and the word labor coming out of you. Like, you got, you got some good things going on. Um, I, by the way, another reason why I give you guys that heated warning at the beginning. A year ago, this past September, um, I actually brought my group back here, just like I always do, trying to stay out of the way of the other tours. And the kid next to me, to my right, starts to go white as a ghost. Like, literally drop into the ground. I gotta pick him up by his armpit to get him to stop from hitting his head on the ground. His boyfriend picked him up from the other side of him, and we get him over to the wall, which is where we're all gonna meet back up again. Um, and we're getting him feeling better, a bottle of water. I then told them the story that I just told you. They didn't know anything about Aunt Bonnie or Mary Reed. I spread everybody out with their devices, and them two guys pull me aside and say, Nick, we have to tell you, we are two transgender males, meaning I had two females dressed oh. as males, oh, wow. just like Ann and Mary in the story on the tour. Again, I don't normally, like, that's not something I pay attention to. I memorize names, and it's, let's go. Like, that's kind of my mentality with this. So it wasn't something I poked the bear with and said, what's going on with you two? You know, it was a, and it was a nice, cool night just like this. The kid was not overdressed, and I say kid because he was probably, you know, lower 20s. Um, but again, very weird instance. This is the type of thing that I see, I don't want to say on a regular basis, but it was a weird thing and it made complete sense as to why he passed out the minute we entered the space. So again, we have to take things like that with a, a really good, like, what's happening with the supernatural. Psychics and mediums normally don't make it past the pinky mansion site, like I mentioned earlier, and they never tell me that they're actually a practicing medium. So that's usually the ones that drop to the ground and I gotta call the paramedics. So, and a pinky mansion site is usually that spot. Just so you know, you do get some high even up in there. Alright, so we're going to spread out, come back and see me in about five minutes, and we're going to see what's going on with your device. What was here? I know I know you talked about the building, but what was in this location? Was this just an open this field? This was always open. It belongs to the church. Ah. So we're in the, the church's space right now. Okay. It is like a little, sometimes I get a little touchy about us being over here, but I don't see any like tourism officers out tonight, so I'm like, eh, let's go. <laughs> Again, this is kind of one of those touch and go places. And were you in prison when you were pregnant? No. How many children do you have?
we go. Oh, I forgot to read that. So Henry Jones, mm -hmm. obviously up the center, but then the mm -hmm. is buried on the cemetery at the corner of the street. Three. And he keeps giving the clues to him over here. We also heard 1984 on another one, so that's three years off in the Brigade. He made a donate in 1970, 1984. I got I gotta look, or maybe he lived to the age of 84. Like, wow. Like well, it just kept saying hmm. The problem with Henry is that he's in a cemetery. Yeah. And I don't like to go up there because there is a tour that goes yeah. through it, and we can't go inside. I don't have that access, and it's just one of those pieces where it's very odd. So. not to get too much information from it at yeah. this point. That's why I kind of interrupted you. Yeah. Because if something starts to pop through, I don't want it in. You don't want it in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that way when I'm like, it just pops up and yeah. it just pops up. So it sounds like you've had a lot of experiences, which is probably not most people can see you have yeah. at some point. So, so that's But it's and okay. And life to the belly. It's 
So, yeah, you know. I'm going to start okay. rounding everybody up. All right. Paula, you got anything? Stay here. It's got both in there. church terms. Ah, I, well, we're all here. We can actually do it here. That's cool. Um, I normally take us to the wall so I can actually set my bag down. Um, so, lots of things going on. I'm excited about, uh, you heard the name Henry mm -hmm. pop through, and we also have uh, a couple of numbers that might be relevant to that. So we heard the, the year, 1984. Um, there is a Henry Lawrence Pinckney buried one block away this way on the other side of the powder magazine. Obviously a descendant of Eliza. I'm going to see if the number 84 is relevant to either his death year that he died or the, how old he was. But again, she also heard 844. So we have that 84 that's mixed in with there again. So again, when things repeat themselves like that, i got to take a look. It's screaming at me going, look at me, look at me. The other thing she heard was 777. Seven shows up here a lot. Let me tell you why. It's in one of three ways. First off, we're still near Philadelphia Alley. His birthday is July 7th, 7-7. Seven, seven. So we get double sevens all the time. John Calhoun is buried behind us. He was our seventh vice president. The powder magazine that we are discussing has served seven different wars and one rebellion. So again, the number seven shows up here all the time. The fact that you had them all consecutively, like 777, yeah. like lucky number on the, on the slot machine, like I'm stoked. Like that's, that's a great set of numbers. Um, we also got Ann Bonnie's hair color. Did you get it with a direct? Like, what color is your hair? And it showed up red? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, you can't get much better than that. I'm still excited about Plead. Like, that is probably, honestly, the biggest piece we had here. We had Ann Bonnie's initials. We had the word labor. Like, you guys have gotten a lot of stuff. I'm hoping that the two film filmographers over here have caught some crazy stuff over here, too. I have gotten the best orb I've ever gotten the second night I was using that device in this location. Really? Um, it is giant. And it is intelligent. It comes up like behind me and then stops and goes up above me. So it was over by that wall. You guys will see that tomorrow because I did write a field guide for you guys on how to go through all of your media. It can be very daunting when you look at it going, how the hell am I supposed to do this? The field guide literally goes by device, by each one of how to listen to it, what to look out for. And there are paranormal examples in there like that giant orb because that's a big one for us. Um, so you guys will be able to see things like that. Uh, disembodied EVPs. So we do get those disembodied EVPs like they show you on TV, but I get about four or five of those a year, not 12 an episode. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, those damn TV shows make guys like me look bad that are actually diving into the history and understanding why these things are happening versus, we heard something, let's go, we're out of here. Like that just blows my mind if they don't wrap up the damn story. So it really does. And it's just sad that Chip Coffee and his talents are being wasted on freaking TV. So I love that guy. I do too. Um, I'm super stoked about this, but let's go over the very quick answers of the things I, that I gave you. I got a couple words. Oh, I got yeah. I'm judge. <laughs> Guys, this doesn't get any better. I got the name Benjamin. Okay. And We're a little far from that. Sovereignty. I got United States of America while you were talking. Like, it came through really you heard, you heard in the trees, right? So, the in the trees bit is a little interesting. So, we do have plenty of pirate stories around Charleston because we're a harbor town, right? So there is another pirate, Steve Bonnet, and his story basically is that he got captured by uh, William Rhett, and 
he is buried on the other side of this wall, so his captor is really close by. But his crew was actually hung at White Point Garden, and it is said that you can see the hanging pirates in the trees of White Point Garden. She heard, in the trees. We're, we're close to the captor. Again, I have no evidence of that story. I've investigated it with all of the crazy cameras and all the spirit box work. I get nothing when I'm at White Point Garden. It's just one of those pieces where I had to try to either prove it or debunk it because it's a crazy story. I get nothing. So keep that in the back of your mind. But it is very interesting that you heard in the trees. I'm, Does I'm... September mean anything? I got SCP. Not to my knowledge of this location. I'm, go I'm like running through birthdays. So birthdays are definitely... maple tree, was it? No. Oops. <laughs> um, one of the few pictures you can find of Anne Bonny with a shirt on. The reason why is because she used to bear a breast to show men that they were just killed by a woman. So, told you, she was a badass chick, right? So, her parents' names, William Cormack, Mary Brennan. None of you were expecting a secondary Mary. Again, another little subliminal something-something, but it's the only, it's one of the better questions that I could come up with for this space. So, none of you heard William or Mary tonight. We'll see what I find when I go through this in the morning. I still don't know who the hell Benjamin is. Like, that was going to blow my mind because we're a little far from Lodge Alley. Again, they're going to stay in that space because of what type of ghost it is. Um, everybody likes to see the original Calico Jack, and there's really only one picture of him. So, it is a woodcut. Calico Jack was named that because of the jackets that he wore. His father was a tailor, which means textiles were very important to him. The jackets he wore came from the British captains that he killed. So, Calico Jack, fancy jacket. That's basically where the name comes from. The name of his ship, as you already know, is the Kingston. I am excited that King we heard while we were in Philadelphia Alley on the word list. Again, bleed over. So the word King does not show up here very often, so I get very excited when it occurs. I mean, we have a lot going on here. There's probably a good eight to nine very solid first clues of things that are going on in this location right now. We're going to see what I capture when I go through your data in the morning. What I will tell you is that 40% of evidence is caught in real time. Basically what we just went through. The other 60% is caught by going through the medium. Which is exactly why I give it back to you. So again, you guys have never done this. You don't know exactly what you're listening for. And again, common radio stations like, Welcome to Charleston and buy a Kia today. Yeah, I throw that shit away. Anything that has the year in it, I throw that away too because it's said often. And 20 and 22 are both relevant to a lot of our spaces. Eliza was 22 when she, she married Charles, and the number 20 is relevant to Big John because that was his first jersey number in 1947. So again, I want the specifics, as you guys are seeing. 2022 is way too easy. Um, you guys were very attentive, very focused. I love it. Um, so it's, it's not that I, I didn't want the interaction because I think like the facial expressions you guys are giving me like is awesome. So that shows me that you guys had a good time. Which was, mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to see what's going to come out of this. Um, and the reason, like when I, I talked to some of you about like, some hecklers, a negative Nancy in the group really ruins the whole thing. Like it's not that there's, I'm not like, ah, oh, they had a heckler, or, there's not going to be much here. I still go through everything with an honest eye and I, I score everything so I know how active your tour was and you're going to see how I rate those on your, on your field investigation guide. So again, I give you guys a lot of data back and I'm your new Zach Bagans. If you guys find shit in other cities, file me and send it to me for me and the wife to analyze it for you. We'll, we'll either debunk it or prove it for you in 24 hours. I answer emails and phone calls pretty quickly as I'm sure you guys have all realized that with the texting we've all done. So what questions do you have? Or was I that thorough? Like, you guys are so focused. <laughs> it was fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't looking for compliments. I was looking for <laughs> no, but I mean, it was it was just the things that came up that yeah. were spot this was on. A good night. Um, and I'm usually really honest. I, like, if I've had a light night, I tell the team, like, guys, this was light, but we're gonna see what I find in the morning. Like, again, I'm not gonna, I'm not Zach Vegas. I'm not gonna throw Aaron into the corner and say good luck. Like, <laughs> you guys all know who I'm talking about. You guys all watch the damn shows. No. Um, and, can't like, stand that show. Can't stand. That. I watch it a for the humor. And they have some really cool techniques. So when they're using like a Tesla coil to you know, take a spirit box to get it into the open air, they're creating basically electricity in the air for the ghost to use to speak back. I keep telling the wife, I gotta get one of those kits to, to like buy, you know, make the Tesla coil so I can attach one of the spirit boxes to it. She's like, you're gonna take a Tesla coil on the tour? I'm like, no, it's gonna go next to my Ouija board and my dowsing rods and all the shit that I don't take on the tour. So that's the stuff that I would like to use. Um, I'm going to start collecting devices. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hand Landra a stack of cards. Take whatever you guys want. Um, it's, it's just got my email and phone number on there.